सर कैमरा ऑफ नहीं सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर मॉर्निंग स्ट्रीमिंग आरंभ चल सर लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग आरंभ चल चाहे सार वंदे वंदे चेक पंट है सर चेक पंट पे डरा हाँ मसल ही इल्बी जॉइनिंग एट 9:55 फिफ्टी फाइव फिफ्टी फाइव इल्बी जॉइनिंग सर ये लाव रो प्रेजेंटेशन बात नहीं है ला इस सर सर चल 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 पहला नहीं है लर में ऑनलाइन लेकिन ला इल्बी सर नम्बर टीम ले रखे होंगे मटन सर ऐसा अभी भी मटन हाँ जी पेरी यूट्यूब पे उन्हें बोलेंगे पाल पांडी सरवन நம்ம <laughs> 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 on behalf of psna college ingra wording full la epayume varanum that is a main okay. aim okay okay sir, okay okay sir. engineering kunja principal peru unga nama sir peru la sollalam pro chairman peru la sollalam hmm? okay sir ana college name cut aagi varanum neenga vandu simple ah mudichirringa adha mari mudikka vena okay okay sir. with the name of the college okay sir aram kirappi seri mudikirappi seri adhe mari pannunga hmm? okay sir. college name நிறைய <laughs> யூடியூப்ல இருக்கும் ஆமா சார் ஆமா சார் ஆமா சார் ஆமா சார் சரி 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 ஓகே லைவ் ஸ்ட்ரீமிங் ஆன் கஸ்டம் ஃபைன்ல எடிட் பண்ணிக்கலாம் சார் நான் எடிட் பண்ணி அப்லோட் பண்ணிக்கலாம் ஓகே அது யாரு நம்ம அட்மின் தான் பண்ணுமா எல்லா ரெக்கார்ட் ஆகுது எடிட் பண்ணிக்கலாம் சார் அது ஆனால் பண்ணிக்கலாம் சார் அது யூடியூப்ல இருக்கும்
हेलो Yes, hello. Fifty seven. Sir, good morning. Hey, how are you, old friend? Yeah, I'm here. See, I have lost. I have lost even more weight, pa. Yes, 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 yes. अच्छा नहीं नहीं ये तो नॉन नहीं अच्छा केट इट नहीं हरी टेबल स्मार्टिंग टेबल वेरी नाइस वेरी नाइस सो सो हैप्पी टू सी यू पा आई विल जस्ट शेयर माय स्क्रीन ना स्क्रीन शेयर पन रहा है सी नाउ इट मेक्स ऑल द मोर मीनिंग टू जॉइन दिस बिकॉज़ आई कैन सी माय गुड फ्रेंड कर्णन यस कर्णन तेरी था हाँ तेरी तेरी थे Very great. Visible, preparing for this uh, so, to make India greater. Yes. So whenever uh, you say jute pa, I will start. Okay. Hari. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get ready. Yes, yes sir. We are start. We are starting by ten, sir. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Hey, pa. In the background, in our video, lo, and my room is uh, visible. Is it okay, or should I blur it? Sir, it is okay, sir. Sir, this show. பரவாயில்ல Okay, sir. Good morning to one and all present here. It's my pleasure to welcome you all for this webinar conducting by the Department of Mechanical Engineering, PSNE College of Engineering and Technology, Dindigul. Thank you for joining with us for uh, today's webinar, uh, preparing for future. As per the direction of Pro Chairman and the guidance of uh, Principal and HOD, uh, we in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. or in the process of conducting the sixth webinar in the series of webinar planned for the forthcoming days it's my pleasure uh, to introduce about the chief guest of this day our speaker is uh, dr uh, satya prasad sir uh, vice president r and d in ashok leyland where he has been working for uh, more than 15 years uh, before that he spent 5 years in dana corporation usa and more than a couple of years at babcock and wilcox canada he has a bachelor of engineering from college of engineering gindi master of science from university college of university of regina canada and doctor of philosophy from memorial university canada uh, he has won a number of awards uh, during his career and also has a number of patents and uh, publications to his credit he has also guided uh, two phd candidates from iit madras now i would like to invite uh, dr satya prasad sir to carry over this session over to satya sir very nice oh, good morning uh, merlin that was a very nice introduction that you have given and uh, i am first of all very happy to talk to number of children uh, from psne college of engineering and technology 
and uh, I am doubly happy because I see my very old friend, Kan, uh, Professor Kannan Rajendran. Uh, Professor Kannan and I know each other for many, many years. So it was another bonus. Uh, before, uh, you know, when I agreed for making this presentation, uh, you know, uh, it came through Ashok Leyland, a colleague of mine. Uh, you know. Um, uh, Gopi Kannan asked me uh, if I would be willing to talk to the children at uh, PSNA College. I said, no problem, Gopi. And uh, by the way, how do you know PSNA? He said, well, my brother Hari Kannan is uh, associated with PSNA, he said. I said, oh, that's great, no problem. So immediately I agreed. Then a uh, few days later, uh, my colleague, Mr. Gopi Kannan called me and said, uh, sir, uh, you know, how should we honor uh, this favor that you are doing to PSNA? Uh, I said, what do you mean? No, no, you know, the institution would want to give you something. So I just joked, hey, maybe should we make it 50,000 rupees or 1 lakh rupees or something? And Gopi knows me very well, so he started to laugh. Then I said, look, talking to children is the best reward. And uh, uh, there is no greater reward than talking to the children. So for me, if PSNA has, uh, is paying me, that means they've already paid me. Uh, to transfer knowledge by getting money is uh, not correct. Whatever uh, we have to give, we have to give it. Uh, see, I'm not a professional teacher. I am working in an industry. The industry is paying me well. So I said the best reward is actually talking to children. So I thought I have already uh, been given a reward. Now, PSNA has paid me even more. How did it pay me? Well, I see my dear friend Karnan Rajendran's picture. Now, what more can somebody expect? So I'm doubly delighted to see my uh, dear, dear friend, uh, Professor Karnan Rajendran. So with this small, light introduction, uh, this topic is to uh, help young engineers I take the liberty of uh, calling you children because uh, my child is also the same age as you pursuing engineering. So I take the liberty and call uh, the students as children. So how should we prepare for future? India had been great. India is a great country. How should we make it even greater? What should each one of us do? My presentation would Go around for a uh, go for around forty five minutes. I will take you through a journey. I will email this presentation to my good friend uh, Professor Kannan Rajendran as well as uh, Professor Hari Kannan and also my colleague Gopi Kannan, so that uh, you know the children have access to the presentation. So let us start by the most recent news we have all been hearing. Most of us know this company called Huawei. Now Huawei was on the wrong side of United States for some reason, we'll not get into that. Somehow America felt Huawei was not working for America's interest. It was actually working against America's interest. So Donald Trump, who is known to speak his mind out, very clearly said that, look, we will not give Android operating system to Huawei. Now, Huawei did not get cowed down. Huawei said, if Google does not give us Android, please understand we have our own operating system. We have our own apps and we notified back. This was amazing because many people thought across the world, if Google does not give Android to Huawei, Huawei's entire business would collapse. It did not. Why? Because Huawei was preparing for future, considering that any day Google can pull the plug. This is a big lesson that one should be self-reliant. We cannot always depend on others. 
many years ago canada gave us nuclear reactors called as can do reactors but when a foreigner gives you a technology they put lot of conditions in 1974 canada india detonated nuclear bomb in a place called pokhran in rajasthan immediately after that canada stopped all the nuclear dealings with india but india did not cow down today india's nuclear industry both for self defense as well as for peaceful purpose such as power generation is very very strong we learned very early that we should be self reliant in early 90s india wanted to upskill its rocket technology for that it needed cryogenic rocket engines cryogenic means low temperature now in inside the rocket you have liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen liquid hydrogen at minus 20 degree centigrade liquid oxygen at minus 80 degree centigrade very very cold but it when combustion takes place and comes out we are talking about few thousand degree centigrade just think about it it's like telling that you have a fence and on this side uh, the house is in uh, antarctica and on the other side it's in a volcano that's like that one side you have extremely cold conditions and other side extremely hot condition russia was about to give us the technology but america and other countries put pressure and said don't give technology to india today india is one of the five countries to have cryogenic motor technology amazing this shows that indian scientists are as good as anybody else in the world i will tell you an interesting story many of you know about iphone you know it's a prestige to have an iphone but what you may not know is there is a company in china called foxconn that makes iphone for apple for every iphone that is made foxconn makes only 7 dollars so 178 dollar it costs for foxconn to make an iphone add to it 7 dollars 185 dollars so apple buys this phone from foxconn for 185 dollars and it sells to you and me for 560 dollars apple makes at least 350 to 370 dollars margin per iphone so the doer gets 7 dollars the thinker gets 360 370 dollars so always thinking is very very expensive compared to doing now china learned and what happened if you look 20 years ago the best phones were from nokias and sony ericsson and motorola and hp and blackberry nexus from google all that today they are almost unheard of everybody talks about lenovo huawei jioni xiaomi oppo so china has learned that from a doer it has to become a thinker so india should become a thinker so if we have to become thought leaders what should we do right so the question comes what is the difference between invention and innovation if our future would have to be great then we would have to become good in invention but good in innovation and becoming good in innovation is far far more important for a country like india why if you spend money to create something new that is invention if you have created something new and it starts to make money for you that is innovation which means invention is science innovation is engineering so as engineers we should focus a lot on innovation and my presentation is about what should i do? everybody talks about innovation where should i start 
what should i do what's the end of all this how should my life be how should my life be before this presentation and how should my life be after my presentation these are some questions all of us have let me caution you innovation is not a fun game what you see is success apple ipod for example is a success but there have been lot of failures also hewlett packard made a smartphone many years ago failed many of you know about this little transport device called a segway i remember in early 2000 there was lot of hype it was code named ginger it was a mystery product nobody knew what it was but there was lot of hype and then when segway was released just before that it was told that the software code in this segway would put microsoft operating system to shame but segway was a failure microsoft zune is a wonderful product just like apple ipod failed palm pilot was an extremely successful product when until late 90s and early 2000 failed blackberry was very very successful until few years ago no what to be seen windows phone failed google glass failed pebble smartwatch failed now you understand that all these products are excellent products cutting edge products great products failed what succeeds and what fails that's what we are going to talk about now one thing we have to realize is that certain disciplines are lagging behind certain other disciplines 30 years ago if you say you know finite element analysis people would salute you because finite element was a novelty today everybody does a cad everybody does a cae everybody does a cfd one thing we have to understand is that the rate of change in electronics and computers are becoming faster than mechanical engineering and mechanical engineering now cannot exist without dependence on electronics and computers so what is happening is these days engineering is becoming multidisciplinary i said need for innovation in mechanical engineering but really it can it can apply to civil engineering it can apply to electrical engineering it can apply to instrumentation engineering anything today there is nothing called as a pure mechanical engineering pure civil engineering it is all mixed up for example when right brothers made an aircraft first aeroplane they were only concerned about aerodynamics today there are miles and miles of cable inside an aircraft there are computers inside an aircraft there are communication devices inside an aircraft an average car has 60% electronic components which means if you take an f22 raptor jet it has 1.7 million lines of computer code an f35 joint strike fighter has 5.7 million but your average luxury car has 100 million lines of computer code 100 million lines in 2005 the ford car had 2.4 million lines of code in 2010 10 million lines today you are actually talking about in a ford car probably 50 60 million lines of code now when the first automobile was designed by daimler we were worried about an ic engine nobody knew what a computer was electronics was very primitive so all you had in us near mind was how should my gearbox be how should my rear axle be how should my engine be today it's not like that an automobile was mechanical engineering 50 60 years ago today it is also mechanical engineering it is computer engineering it is electrical engineering it is communication engineering it's electronics engineering it's instrumentation engineering you name it so let us look at india deeply before we think what we should do 
this is a picture of a Greek god called Janus. This Greek god has two heads. One head looks at the past, one head looks at the future. Let us look at the past. For almost, uh, until as recently as 150 years, India was the richest country on earth. China and India were two rich countries. Nobody knew what US was. Then something happened. What happened? If you look at 12,000 years ago, we had the first oldest return, uh, I mean, uh, properly rendered document called the Rig Veda. 600 BC, we had the first university in the world called Takhtasila, where people from all over the world came and studied. Alexander tried to conquer as many kingdoms, but he lost in India and he had to go back and he died in Babylon. And Purushottam who fought Alexander was a small king actually. There were much, much mightier kings beyond Purushottam. In 180 AD, Karikala built the Grand Anekat, which is still standing. Think about it. We knew how to build a dam many, many, many years ago. AD 500, we built the Nalanda University. Then we had foreign invasion. We had foreign colonization. We had mass looting of the country. Our economy dwindled. We got independence in 1947. Till 19... 91, we were socialistic. Then we opened our economy. Now we are growing. How should we grow is the question. See, as I said, from 1947 to 1991, there were big government enterprises. 1991, the economy was opened. You had a lot of IT companies coming. Then you had core companies coming. And then 2008, America collapsed. Naturally, we too had the repercussion. And from June 2009 to now, we are struggling to find a growth path. And as the economy was down, now unfortunately you have COVID also. But are there any areas as engineers where should we concentrate? As engineers, you can concentrate on three areas. Number one, high level engineering and consultancy. What is high level engineering? knowing advanced techniques. I will tell you some areas that you can concentrate upon. Innovation. I will talk about that. Development of disruptive products and technology. I will also talk about that. But before that, we have to understand that today, more than 50% of our GDP, GDP means how much money the country earns, comes from IT and BPO, service industry as they call it. Technology is missing. Look at our GDP, right? Agriculture, 17%. Industry, 29%. Services, 54%. And you have an inflation. Now the inflation has come down a little because of bad economy. Now, 54% of GDP from service industry is not very good, actually, for a country like India. Why? Because by services... What we mean is somebody pays us money to do things. They will say, I will give you this money. You develop the software for me. What happens? The person who pays you money does not pay to think. He pays money for you to do. Naturally, this kind of does not help thinking. But we just said that if we want to evolve. We should not be a Foxconn. We should be a Huawei or a Xiaomi. We should think. Right? So, one thing that is very clear is technology is still not prominent in our GDP. And we are only still serving the West. If we have to be truly independent, we should be thought leaders. And I will tell you how to be, become thought leaders. Okay, fine. One side question. If outsourcing jobs to, you know, manufacturing and all that to China and India is good, it has not helped countries like America also. 
in 2009, this is 2009 data, so many companies in US became bankrupt. Which means the clear message is one should know how to do like Foxconn and one should know how to think like Huawei. So we should all be a doer, but we should also be a thinker. We should be both. America, outsource job, thinking, uh, you know, having the notion that we will retain thinking to ourselves and let China do. But that had not helped. Today, if you look at the newspaper, what is Trump telling, Donald Trump is telling, we have to bring back manufacturing to United States. So Trump is telling that America should think and America should also do. Thinking is R&D. Doing is manufacturing. In the past, what did America say? We will keep R&D to ourselves. Manufacturing, we will send it to Mexico. We will send it to Brazil. We will send it to China. We will send it to India. Today, what is America telling? We will do R&D, but we will also do manufacturing. Okay? If you look at great people like Jeffrey Emelt, Ergen Schrempf, etc., they've all said, in order to become great today, how to have a great future? What makes the future great? A passion for innovation. That's what great people say. Now, if you look at many institutes around the world, they are all very reputed in a particular domain. For example, in Berkeley, there is an earthquake engineering research center. Berkeley is in California, and in California, you have a lot of earthquakes. University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, has an automotive research center, ARC. Why? Because you have a lot of automotive companies in Detroit. Clemson has an automotive research center. Sheffield has a surface engineering center. So, first thing is, there is a need to create ecosystem that would foster specialized research. Let me give you some example. What you see on the top right, it looks like a very complicated machine. This is nothing but the mechanism in a wristwatch. Can you imagine a wristwatch having such a complicated mechanism? Then you can imagine how deeply people are thinking. What you see on the bottom left is the Large Hadron Collider. I didn't put the International Space Station, but I have put a space shuttle, which is no longer in operation. On the top left, you see the Seco Kinetic Watch. Even you look at a pen. You know, what you see is a Mont Blanc pen. Then I spoke about iPod and all that. See, people are constantly thinking and innovating, right? So we should stop talking about basmati rice, turmeric, and all these things. And we have to understand that the world is going far, far ahead. But if you look at where we are in terms of patent, we are on the bottom. Look at where China. China is right now, this is an old data, but it has grown substantially. Look at the countries like Korea, South Korea, United States, Germany. They are all very, very mature countries. Patent filing, this is 10-year-old data. But you can see China and South Korea are very aggressive. India is still not there. Maturity of research, India nowhere to be seen. R&D expenses, India is not on the top. So we end up reading news, intellectual property index. India remains at the bottom. So it is the responsibility of each one of us to ensure that India does not remain at the bottom. So we have to understand a few things. First, technology changes. Let me give an example. The first is called as technology disruption. This is a very important term for students to understand. You see a candle on the top and you see an LED lamp on the leftmost corner. 200 years ago, homes were lit by candles. So if you are a good candle manufacturer, that means you had a good business because every house had to buy a lot of candles because that is the only way they can keep the house lit up once the sun sets. But 
when edison invented the light bulb now people did not have any more reason to buy candles because light bulb is very convenient you can just switch off and switch on and it is very easy whereas candle is very messy so the moment the light bulb was invented many candle makers ran out of business today when you we have all led lamps in our houses cfl people are out of business but 10 years ago cfl people were selling lot of cfls because they were putting tube light people out of business so this is disruption every time a new technology comes the old technology goes out of business which means the best cfl businessman is no longer the best the moment people start buying led like that 10 15 years ago people spent a lot of money i would say 20, 30 years ago people spent a lot of money buying a film roll camera 10 years ago people spent a lot of money buying a digital camera today nobody wants to buy a digital camera because the mobile phone does a very good job in taking digital pictures which means technology is changing and we have to change next is reverse innovation what is reverse innovation we all know ecg right when you go to hospital they take an ecg to understand how the condition of the heart is we get a nice graph paper general electric several years ago made a cheap ecg that cost only 500 dollars for india because many indians cannot afford ecg ecg is expensive this machine worked so well that it is now being sold in western europe and america and japan so sometimes innovation that is meant for indian context can have a market in developed countries this is called reverse innovation it is not innovation flowing from america to india it is innovation flowing from india to america like that upgraded version of tata nano today we are talking about an electric tata nano another example is jaipur food right jaipur is known for years together in making good quality prosthetics for people who have lost their legs and hands there is a market for it abroad today you can actually see lot of western people coming to india for what is called as medical tourism because you can get good quality affordable treatment medical treatment in india for well, example for reverse innovation is another terminology called open innovation where you can actually get ideas from lot of people in the world for a problem through web portals so i would introduce you children to another thing called as kunk works what is kunk works doing some mini projects by yourself when i was growing up we didn't have much money i used to really really save money to make myself a battery eliminator to buy a little motor to buy a little transformer to buy some small circuits from a place called ritchie street in chennai but today with your pocket money you can buy an arduino board you can buy lot of electronic kits you can actually build a small motor stepper motor is very cheap today right you can actually buy so skunk works is the ability of two or three of you to pool in your pocket money together and make your own little hobby robots and hobby kits you have to understand i'll just skip this okay this is an interesting slide i want to introduce you see in 1970 if you go to an american and you talk about a compact car a small car they will laugh at you for an american a car means it has to be very huge very big today there is a big market for compact cars in united states in fact general motors worked with segway to come up with a one person transport device segway and general motors unimaginable few decades ago like here you can see you know mercedes benz that makes one of the most expensive luxury cars also makes bicycles so people change we cannot say that i am good at something 
and i would be relevant till the rest of my life so even if you have a good organization today you have lot of things that disrupts the way organization function fuel prices government policies disruptive innovation i might have a good organization that makes fantastic cables but the moment somebody makes a light bulb which is a disruptive innovation my business is out all right so i'm going to tell you what we have to do to be current take for example covid see some it happened in a very small place in china but it spread throughout the world and literally it brought the world to a grinding halt one other thing we have to understand is 30 40 years ago if you have oil you have money today it's changing if you have lithium you have money why because almost all the batteries are becoming lithium ion batteries your mobile phone battery is lithium ion battery your electric vehicle battery is a lithium ion battery right so lithium is becoming the new oil therefore you have to understand that the world is changing and there are certain areas this presentation would be made available to you so you don't have to worry about copying anything lot of new areas are coming artificial intelligence big data internet of things automation quantum computing augmented reality additive manufacturing connectedness communication systems smart cities 5g so as young children there are several areas there where you can actually do self reading there are a lot of material available in the internet without wasting time instead of maybe watching a movie or instead of watching youtube or i mean you can watch youtube for good reasons okay instead of wasting your time you can actually read about all this another thing is to have a ecosystem being alone doesn't help anymore because you have academia like psna college that creates brain power but then you have government lab you have industry you have government regulation if everybody comes together only we can maintain a healthy ecosystem this has to be understood so there is a need to come together i know psna is a very reputed old college they conduct a lot of conferences everything but we have to aggressively move forward because we cannot exist alone okay i'm skipping these slides you can read it when you have time i will email this to your teachers okay i will let you that okay so we have to understand that if we think your pizza and burger is going to replace idli vada sambar that is literally cultural hijacking that is not good yeah you can have a pizza occasionally but your idli vada sambar should remain okay why because when you take lessons from the west i told pizza because that's a, a funny example of taking lesson from the west you can take good lessons from the west britain how people come together they ruled the world for two centuries united states very patriotic people israel sovereignty germans are good for technology japanese are good for hard work india what do we have what should be we? we have to learn something from ourselves our culture and heritage see what you see on the right you know this little child standing was after tsunami in 2012 exactly after one year look at how they changed the place this is what we have to learn what we are learning well we have learned to make a motorcycle that goes from 0 to 100 in 8 seconds and we all want to drive it very fast but we don't have good roads we don't wear helmets the signal lights don't work right so we cannot selectively absorb technology that is very dangerous so when we look at innovation we have to look at an ecosystem where the country develops holistically not just one motorcycle that drives fast i'll give a very small story here i was talking about disruption a few slides ago so what is disruption 
I'll give you an example. This little tortoise is in a fish bowl. So this little tortoise said, okay, I was in a big pond. Somebody has now put me into a little bowl. Life hasn't changed. And then you have a disruption, which is a fire burning. Now the water becomes a little warm. The tortoise becomes very happy because warm water is very comfortable for it, its body. So it swims here and there very happy. Oh, water is warm. But what it doesn't understand is pretty soon the water is going to boil and the turtle will get cooked. What does this story mean? The technological changes happening in the world is like this burner here. If we are comfortable with our current knowledge, we are like a turtle. So when you have all this engineering service, IT, everything, warming up this water, we feel comfortable because, you know, we do write a program for some American or a German company. They pay us money. We are happy. But what we don't understand is tomorrow you can have competition from Philippines, from Thailand, from Sri Lanka, uh, maybe from African countries. If they are cheaper, then all the Western countries will outsource IT and BPO to those people, which means we would get cooked. Which means if my past life has been good, if we say my last 15, 20 years have been good, that doesn't mean tomorrow is going to be good. This is the second example I'm giving. There was this little bird, turkey, you know, many of you know, in Tamil it's called Van Kori. It was taken care of by a man. He used to feed it every day, give it water, take it to the vet, and it was becoming fatter and fatter. So the turkey had a very, very good impression about the human. He said, oh, humans are very good. They feed me, they take me to the veterinarian, they give me uh, water, everything. But one day, this man took the turkey out and he was sharpening his knife to kill it, cook it and eat it. That day, the turkey suddenly realized, oh my God, all these days I have been fed with the intention of being eaten. Which means, if other countries are helping us, that does not mean that they have very kind, good opinion about India and they want it. No, it's like feeding the turkey. If the turkey is strong enough, it should attack the man and it should fly away. Right? But this turkey did not know. It got cooked and it ended up in a dinner plate. So we cannot become turkeys. If India has to become great, if our future should be great, we have to learn to innovate. So, you know, when we interact with the world in the 90s, the world said, okay, you do all our IT services, something that we won't, don't want to do. Then they said, oh, Indians are not bad. They can think. So they established technology center like Microsoft R&D, GE R&D, all that. Today they are telling, we want you to spend money. Okay. So the globalized world, the flat world as they call, does not give you freedom to operate the way you want. You become part of a global economy. The question is how much control do we have on that? Right? So I'm going to give suggest nine steps for you. These nine steps were told by a great man called Professor Shoji Shiba. He's a Padma Shri. He helped the small and medium industries in India, and he was invited by the government of India, especially by the late great president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. I strongly recommend each of you to listen to Professor Abdul Kalam also after this lecture. He's a great man. Listening to him will also help your future to become great. So nine lessons he gave. What lessons? We Indians like to talk all the time. If we give a chance, we keep talk, 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 talk. We should reduce talking. The other bad thing that we have is we are selfish people. 
we should not be selfish we should have enlightened self interest next passing the buck if things go correct we come and say sir i did it sir i did sir if things don't go sir because of him i did all the right things sir but that guy spoiled it another mistake we do is always have a notebook and a pen with you whenever you talk to elderly people observe and take notes so when you don't talk 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 you observe and when you don't talk 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 you take notes next is do things it's okay to fail maybe assemble a small circuit write a small program do something we indians are very good in reading memorizing and writing we should be hands on professor shiba calls if you want to understand fish jump into the fish bowl and swim with the fish next is unlearning sometimes we have a bad habit of telling that oh, look my grandfather was a zamindar my father was a collector so what that doesn't mean anything right we saw disruption right you could be a greatest candle maker but all it takes is one light bulb to destroy your business so we have to learn to unlearn the past and understand what is current understand the big picture what is happening in the industry how do you source the material and up till how do you manufacture the material how do you do r and d how do you market also when you solve problems adopt a scientific approach which means you can think as much as you want about the problem but you also collect data for example if you say i am not getting concentration to study this is what this is a purely intellectual exercise you are sitting and thinking why did i score less i didn't study well why didn't i study because i couldn't concentrate now this is thought what is the fact how do you spend your day when do you wake up that is a fact after waking up what do you do that is a fact how many times you chat with your friends that is a fact how many times you watch movies and uh, this stupid movie songs and all that that is a fact unless thoughts and facts go together we cannot evolve next is skill development in tamil they say sitramum kai palakkam certain things i have to do in order to become skillful if i have to become good in using lathe i have to spend more time with the lathe if i have to speak properly in front of audience that means i have to practice seventh is buddha's three eyes this is nothing but how to become wiser one is you can do certain things what you are doing very well okay these are processes standards certain things you have to improve incrementally but certain things you have to think disruptively how is the world changing am i ready for you know we spoke about disruption a lot next is do one demonstrate if somebody says hey how should i solve this math problem i no problem you are read this book you read that book easy instead of what problem why don't we sit and work together that is doing and demonstrating next is apply what you have learned otherwise it becomes in tamil they call eight to sarakai try to apply which means if you learn a little bit about a diode use a diode if you learn a little bit about transistor try to make a small circuit out of transistor then you will get you can very soon you will start talking about integrated circuits and everything okay i will not uh, talk about this slide this is for industry people so you have to understand that the world the globalized world is like a peacock you see a peacock right on the front it looks very beautiful on the back it looks very ugly so globalization has two parts today the western world with technology is like a peacock in the front the country that does work for them like manufacturing outsourcing and all that like the foxconn is like the back of the peacock what is huawei telling 
who is telling that america you are thinking that i am the back of the peacock no i am not the back of the peacock i am the front of the peacock but what had fox can be doing it was more like the back of the peacock so if i have to change myself what should i do each of you have the question we have to learn from the glorious past in the past one of the theories that was propagated by the british was the aryan invasion theory they said there were there are a people in india called aryans those people came from central asia they pushed the dravidians up behind all that both science as well as archaeology have convincingly proved that this is nonsense and very recently there was another very solid proof in a place in russia called arkay when excavations were conducted it was startling that whatever they found that connoted to rigveda this clearly showed that it is us who went to those places and spread the culture it is not them who came here okay so this arkaim is one of the significant excavation that debunked the aryan invasion theory when people say you are aryan you are dravidian you, you are telugu you are tamil they are trying to split us do not believe you believe in people who try to bring us together as one nation don't believe in people who try to split us if somebody is dividing us by caste creed religion language this that everything go away you say no we are one indians we are identified by our great country called india okay we are one country what you see on the left is a beautiful pyramid by abraham maslow which talks about if somebody wants to improve in their own life what should they do but thousands of years ago taitri upanishad had actually given a very beautiful pyramid on how we can grow up material need energy need uh, emotional need and intellectual need which means our ancient people have given lot of guidance on how we should evolve and if we have to become innovative we should take lessons from the past this is an example a german scholar by name schopenhauer said upanishads are the solace of my life and solace of my death when the first atom bomb was exploded openheimer chanted bhagavad gita think about a foreigner talking about gita now you think about us how many of us know atichudi how many of us know naladiyar how many of us know tirukkural there is nothing that tirukkural does not say how many of us know gita how many of us have even read upanishads see the movie industry is hijacking us the cinema industry is making us all stupid they teach us stupid songs they teach us stupid things how to attract a girl how to dress horribly how to sing songs that have no meanings think about it children think about it on one hand you have our own rishis saints poets of the past bharati or mahakavi subramanya bharati are great poet they are all pulling you up they are all telling become great become great become great the movie industry is teaching you how to smoke a cigarette in style how to drink which do you want children which do you want i know each of you want to become great yes there are occasionally one or two good movies i'm not telling but most of those good movies are not indian movies they are all some very very good quality movies made in europe or uh, you know made by some hollywood people good movies are there i'm not telling don't watch movies star trek great episode laurel and hardy wonderful movies right i have seen a second world war movie called uh, it's a wonderful life there's a beautiful movie called life is beautiful mahatma gandhi by richard attenborough a lot of great movies are there. i'm not telling about those 
i am talking about many many indian movies which shows drinking smoking it shows women dressed very badly it shows ugly dances it shows uh, you know meaningless uh, I, i can't even tell you know it's so horrible horrible so elevate your mind towards greatness because if you look at chatrapati shivaji he was a follower of samatram das if you look at this great leader netaji subhash chandra bose he followed from vivekananda dr jagadish chandra bose one of the greatest scientists was are ad- ad- adoring admiring takshashila nalanda university the genius kavyakanta ganapati muni was a follower of ramana maharshi shrinivas ramanujan one of the greatest mathematician mankind has ever produced followed namagiri devi professor george sudarshan who died recently from texas a&m unfortunately was not given nobel prize because he is an indian goes by upanishads do you think any of the great minds go by a movie star or anything that the movie industry teaches or any of the stupid songs that the movie industry shows children you should not smoke you should not drink you should not watch stupid movies you should not you know listen to stupid movie songs think what value it brings to you okay not so when you look at these are some quotes from upanishads you can read it in your leisure i'll give you the presentation because you if you don't follow our culture somebody can destroy our culture this is a yogi a yogi is in the highest stage of realization a yogi is at the highest level of wisdom if we don't follow our tradition the west will take it and convert it to this do you want this yogi to become something as stupid as this that you see on the right if we don't follow our culture this is what will happen therefore i am telling go back to your bhagavad gita go back to your upanishads go back to your uh, trikural go back to your atichudi okay so you know i would just say that you know we should look at the west and get inspired in science technology engineering computers all that yes but you should also be anchored if your future should be great on what our ancient people have taught us if somebody says oh this guy is an aryan that guy is a dravidian just look at him and say go to hell we are indians you say go to hell we say we are one country we will not let anybody divide us if somebody says don't read it don't read that you say no i will read anything that gives me value if somebody says this is the style of movie stars that is the latest movie that shows women in bad light with ugly dress and everything you say go to hell that is not women's freedom india treats women much much better than anybody anywhere in the world and we will treat them with dignity that was told to us by our sages and saints and lastly say proudly ano badra krutavo yantu vishvatah let noble thoughts come to us from every side children it's been a great pleasure talking to you let us move forward fearlessly into the future but we will do, do so by taking lot of inspiration on science and technology from the west but also taking equal amount of inspiration from our noble rishis and sages who have taught us a great way to live thank you very much i have taken 50 minutes i have exceeded uh, by 5 minutes uh, I, i told one hour but you know uh, i have actually cut short by 10 minutes but uh, 
i am done with my presentation thank you very much i once again thank uh, psna college for giving me this great opportunity and i hope you learned something uh, from this presentation this presentation is available will be made available for you thank you very much god bless you all i am done berlin A PSNA can now take over and conclude the presentation. Okay. Melin. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your uh, dissemination of information. Uh, there are questions uh, from the participants. Okay, I can take a few questions if you want me to. One of the questions is, uh, yeah. what is the benchmark you fix to select the students in your company? Uh, well, we uh, for fresh engineers, we go on campus recruitment. Uh, we don't visit the same college again and again. We don't. Uh, we at least try not to. Uh, we have a return test. Uh, we have uh, an interview. Uh, we uh, essentially ensure that uh, the uh, engineer we take uh, should have a reasonable knowledge of uh, the fundamentals of engineering. We don't ask difficult questions. We only ask basics. Uh, the communications should be good. The attitude should be good. Uh, we, uh, you know, uh, very keenly look at the attitude. Uh, how is the student behaving during interview and all that? So these are the few things. But freshers we take only from campus. We don't recruit for advertisements. Thank you, sir. Another question is, uh, uh, what is the future of IC engines? Future of IC engine is pretty sound, pretty good because uh, although the basics of IC engine has not changed, uh, now there are a lot of electronic control systems that are coming in the IC engines. So for at least for large trucks, IC engine is still going to be there for a while. But for passenger vehicles, slowly uh, electric motors will replace IC engines. So IC engines won't die down for the next few decades. It will still be there. But there are a lot of improvements in material technology, electronic controls, and all that. So certainly, you know, um, it won't die uh, at least in the next uh, twenty years. Thank you, sir. And uh, another question is: uh, Will new information technologies uh, change financial risk management process? Uh, well, I mean, uh, this is, uh, uh, I don't know what was the intent behind this question. Uh, you know, um, uh, okay, this is a big topic, financial risk, okay? Uh, financial risk, uh, one of the thing could be IT also, but there are lots and lots of things governing the financial risk. So I will not take this question because uh, this is out of the topic, actually. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, detailed answers. Sure, uh, sure, sure. We are coming to this uh, end of the session. Uh, on okay. behalf of the webinar team, uh, I thank our co-chairman, uh, Guru Araski Ragram, sir, our principal, Dr. Vasudevan, sir, and our HOD, Dr. Kanan, sir, for their uh, consistent support uh, to conduct this uh, webinar and the series of webinars. On behalf of PSNA College of Engineering and Technology and the Department of Mechanical Engineering, on my own behalf, I would like to thank our resource person, Dr. Satya Prasad, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for your valuable time with us. Not a problem at all. I will email this presentation to uh the a few of the professors and uh, it will reach you okay any children if they want they can always take the ppt and uh, use it as a reference thank you very much god bless you bye bye thank you
Bye. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, all the participants uh, for your cooperation. Uh, we are expecting the same for the upcoming webinars. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you for.